And we are back. Oh, whoa. Right, right. <laughs> just making whoa, sure you guys, guys are awake. Guys. <laughs> so we're going to talk about today. Do interrela- interracial relationships strengthen or weaken American culture? And we have our guest today, Ian. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, what's, what's up, up, man? <laughs> and we're going to pick on some of his expertise and some of his uh, opinions about this topic. Yeah. So for all of those that can't see us or haven't seen any of our videos. Oh, right there. I guess you guys <laughs> <to> the camera. <laughs> but again, for those that maybe haven't okay. before, um, I'm Mexican-American. Mm-hmm. And Zod is? I'm black. So that's why this topic for us was very important. And it's something, I guess, for me, it is just, it is our way of life. And I think it adds so much to our relationship is we're both proud of our cultures. We're both proud of where we came from. We're both proud of our families, our heritage, um, our ancestors. And we share that constantly. All right. All right. But don't forget, this is my man, Ian. And Ian... Is a black American, right? You were raised here in Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah. I yeah. was raised in Phoenix. Raised in Phoenix. So we're talking about an Arizona resident. Mm-hmm. But man, this brother can also speak fluent, what is it, Mandarin, right? Yeah, Mandarin. Mandarin. He just came back from China. So his, his like perception and his perspective is going to be a little different. Because you just came back after, what, four years? Yeah, four years. Man. <laughs> like, think about that. Four years in China, communist China. He was in there, in the trenches. So, what were you doing there? Uh, I was teaching English. Yeah, I was an English teacher over there for four years. And there's so many adventures, so many stories out there. It's a great place. So, yeah, believe it. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, not to get personal, but we're going to get personal. I mean, you, you, you had a couple of ladies out there, right? Yeah, I had a few. Yeah, a few, you know what I mean? You know, you got to get out there and represent America, you know? He made America great again. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so why are you making America great out there? You know, did you find that in China, it was any different in the culture um, of interracial relationships uh, than it would be over here? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and China is really conservative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, it depends on the on the people, of course. Like, they do have more liberal people out there. But on a whole, the society is really conservative. People are uh, much more closed off from, you know, the rest of the world. So a lot of people, like a lot of girls that I meet, they would say my parents wouldn't be um, accepting of, you know, having a black boyfriend. Of course. You know, or maybe not even black, but a non-Chinese boyfriend. Even white? Um, For some, I would say even white, even though there are a lot of uh, uh, white and Asian couples out in China. Right. Yeah, Yeah. 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 Because it's funny, um, you know, you see a lot of the first generation Chinese out here in the, you know, in the States, you know, hanging out in Chinatown or whatever, you know, over in New York, you see a lot of them, you know, the first generation, San Francisco, San Francisco mm-hmm. um, you know, they're pretty much all over, pretty, you know, on the coasts of the United States. And, you know, I would always find that, you know, the second generation was way more accepting, you know, they were already ingrained in the American culture. So they would go in and, um, you know against their parents wishes because their parents were usually telling them you know what yo you chill out you know don't bring that negro home you know don't <laughs> bring this but um i would see a lot of like asian with um white guys like asian women white guy that that combination i don't know if the vietnam war had something to do with it uh, but you know they call it yellow fever mm-hmm. and um you know which is a <laughs> derogatory term but you know that's what they call it where you know it's going to wind up being uh usually a white guy i mean there are a lot of black guys too i mean we got the whole wu-tang clan um, <laughs> you know, we got to, oh, I'm sure they've had a few Asian women in the day, um, but uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see a really conservative view, and you know how they don't want to. I guess what they would view it is, is I guess what weakening the culture, weakening their own culture by bringing someone else in. Yeah, that's you hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah, um, they would say that you want to keep China. Like Chinese, so when you when you have a bunch of they don't want they're really proud of Chinese culture. Yeah, and I'm very proud of Chinese culture, which is great. But um, at the same time, it's like, well, let's keep these other influences out because right. we want to keep China, China, you know, for China, like Chinese. Mm-hmm. They're making yeah, you know? they're making China great again. And the same thing is funny when I went off to France. Um, this was years ago. But I remember France, at, at least at that point when I was hanging out in France, they made sure that they had to play a certain amount of French songs. 
because American songs were so popular, it was almost like consuming the French culture that they had to make sure that they, you know, kept their culture. So it's funny to see these outside groups doing similar things that you wonder what America thinks. Now, considering that they're more monolithic than we are, Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're supposed to be a melting pot um, as much as the law tries its best to (laughs) not let it be. Uh, it's we it's kind of cool to see the differences between those and what we are. So it's like I mean, do interracial relationships here strengthen and weaken American culture? And um, like, did you know that movie's coming out? I don't know if you know that movie. Um, so in 1967, um, Loving versus Virginia. Uh, that's when it ratified, like, now you're now allowed to, you know, an invalidated old law is prohibiting um, interracial marriage. So that's only 67. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's funny. And again, it's based on a true story, this movie, right? It's Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, the, yeah. And it's based on that case. And it's funny that it's called Loving, considering, you know, it's a black woman, a white man, and it's about love. But, you know, them marrying got them thrown in jail for a year. It's like, just... And when you think of that, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, oh, 67. For the millennials, they may be like, oh, my God, that's so far... But it's like, that's one year after my brother was born. My oldest brother was born. Like, that's crazy to me that that was, it was in this country, it was outlawed. Mm -hmm. You know, segregation was the thing, separate by race. And, you know, you wonder if certain people believe that it weakened America. You know, it made a weaker America by, you know, mixing our genes. You know, how can you mix those genes with the negroid and you know (laughs) so would you say then the groups that then emerged from that type of mindset would be then your your extremist groups like your white supremacy groups or your eight your your um aryan nation groups that to keep they think america pure which again there's no such thing as a pure american (laughs) unless you're native (laughs) yeah and then you have every right to kick everybody out (laughs) well and just um just to get this straight, interracial, inter, uh, interracial relationships have been going on in America for a long time. Forever. Just Since America, the beginning. Forever. Right. Like, there is there's no way that you can stop, you know, two people from getting together. Like that's, right? That's been going on. It's been going on. Just the fact that getting married being illegal, that's surprising. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's funny. The same thing with gay people. Gay people have been hanging out <laughs> since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. You know, and they've been in the military since the beginning of the military, you know. It's just when people finally come out and they're like, you know what, I'm not hiding anymore. Then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. You guys make me uncomfortable. And how dare you ask for rights? (laughs) Yeah, you know. How do you? you, How how dare you? You you make me a little uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. so uh, we're going to have to stop that, Mm -hmm. you know, for my own ego. I mean, it's crazy that American culture does that. Um, There was funny, there's this article I saw talking about um, the Asian and white thing, and. These are the funny things that uh, they actually said. It's um, from Thought Catalog. I think it's .com. But they said that why they loved, why they believed that Asian women would love white men. And what was their response? Well, there were five reasons. One was they are tall. Which is kind of weird to me because aren't there sections in Asia like where, you know, Yao Ming was from that where these mugs are like six, seven feet. I mean, these are some tall people. Well, there are a lot of tall, <laughs> lanky, basketball playing. Yes. Dunk- right. <laughs> you know, like, there are a lot. So, Asia, there are a lot of people in Asia. So, you can find tall, short, right. you know. So, two billion skinny. people. I think you're going to find yeah, probably right. some people There's that, gonna are, be that some are over people. five, two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Another one, they are assertive, so they find you know the white men you know assertive. You know they they go after what they want. You know, while I was over there, a lot of Chinese people when I was in China, they were really assertive, almost to the point of being aggressive, like wow. making a sale. You know, just in mm-hmm. talking to you, almost pushy, like really pushy. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it depends on the perspective, and it per- depends know. on the person too. Yeah. You know, this is this is this isn't me. This is thought catalog. Just in case you're saying. Then number three, they are cultured. You know, the white men in America, you know, they're, they're cultured. You know, that's... I'm like, what is Who that? Who did this survey? I don't... This is <laughs> thought catalog. Go blame them. This is why I had to talk about it. Cause it was ridiculous. Um, you know, this is why they're saying, which is, you know, why would this make any country greater than... But it's, it's funny. It's almost like you're saying that they believe they're weak and these other people make them stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, they're cultured. Like, culture is everything. Well, you know what I think it is? is Hollywood does such a good job of branding like the value of whiteness yes so when people 
especially like when you take into account China, a lot of people in China, all they know about America is Hollywood. Mm -hmm. so right. So every yes. perception that they get about, you know, uh, white men or white women, it's all from Hollywood. So they're thinking that every white guy is like a Tom Cruise. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Or That's Hugh true. That's true, you know? I mean, the influence of Hollywood on the world, mm. I think they know it. Right. Such as, like, the movie, like, uh, Jones and the Free State and some of these other whatever, you know, where, you know, the white man is the hero and, you know, he's, he's so Anybody that is of any ethnic group is supposed to be the supporting cast. Yeah. It's supposed to, be, you know, help the white man like, get I'll through. Help him because, he, you know, without him, I won't be free. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. You know, I guess it does perpetuate that type of a stereotype where... Mm -hmm. You know, who's not going to be attracted to that if that's what you see? You right. know, it's like... And you know what's crazy is that a lot, of, a lot of people, when I went over to China, a lot of them didn't believe that I was American. Even knowing that, <laughs> you know, Obama's the president, knowing Kobe, they could name more NBA players over there than I could, but... It, <laughs> but no, you? You're American. You're black. You can't be American. You gotta be from Africa somewhere, but... Like, think about that. He was like the unicorn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like you can't be. Like, that only exists on my TV. Like, uh, I was a rare Pokemon. <laughs> you were a rare Pokemon, boy. <laughs> Your was worth at least two million points. <laughs> there was a big crowd following you everywhere yeah, you yeah, went. Right. One time I went on the Metro, and I was wearing, like, this outfit. I promise you... At least 100 to 150 people all had their cell phones pointed at me. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I should have taken a picture because it was like, this is the closest I'll, I ever want to feel to being a celebrity. A celebrity. Oh, my gosh. Man, I got to go over there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just on some ego stroking shit. Uh, they might think you're Jordan. <laughs> <They're> probably right. <laughs> or Luke Cage, if I can get it right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's important for, you know, shows like Luke Cage where you have, uh, you know, a lot of different minorities represented yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. So people can see the truth that, you know, America is not just, you know, a bunch of white guys in suits who mm -hmm. rich and money. It's not, that's not it. Like, there's, it's diverse. It's, it's very diverse. Right. There are a lot of Latinos. I mean, we, we got everything. Latino, Asian, black, white. Come on. So then you bring up a good point about, again, the power of the media, power of Hollywood. So then do you think having interracial couples more frequently in shows, in movies, then could really show an example to other parts of the world that this can happen and it's okay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the media is, does such a good job of brainwashing people. Yeah. Especially when, like in China, they're not going to come over to a lot of them aren't going to come over to China and actually see for themselves, you know, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So they take from, you know, different TV shows that are popular, different movies, and they see, oh, well, this is how it is in Hollywood, so this <laughs> must be how it must is be in real okay. life. Mm -hmm. right? This is how it is. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely portraying more interrelation or interracial uh, relationships. Definitely could only do more to educate people on how it really is. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. That's how it is in America. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, God, you remember you were just watching American Horror Story. Mm -hmm. And you remember the interracial relationship that happened? What was that in season two? Season two. Yeah, because it was Asylum. It was Asylum. You mm -hmm. remember the, and how they were, you know, discriminated against and whatever. And, uh, you know, for me, I've dated everything. Latina, white, black. Asian, I mean, I've had everything under the sun, be like, whatever, because, you know, I just looked at the soul of who it is, you know, it doesn't matter, and I also became very attracted to the culture, mm -hmm. to their culture, their foods, the languages, I mean, that sucked me in like crazy, you know, with you, it's the same thing, you know, you're always talking, like, like it's funny, <laughs> she starts hanging out with all the Latina people, she starts speaking all this Spanish, I'm like, I mean, she gets really amped up, and I love that. To me, that is what makes America great. Mm -hmm. You know, that is what it is. So interrelation, yeah, interracial relationships, for me, I think it strengthens it. Because it also does knock down a lot of stereotypes, but it merges cultures. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you not, how can you hate on somebody who has the culture of this and that? Right. Like, how can you hate on that? Oh, wait, you, you're black and you speak Chinese? You know, like, if you wound up, like, if you wound up having an Asian kid or something, like, Who's going to hate on that kid? Like, mm -hmm. who's going to hate on you for, like, following your heart instead of what other people do is, uh, you know, follow their eyes? Like, one thing I like to do is I try to look at relationships like a blind man. Yeah. Like, if I can. I like, if I can see it like that, I think everybody would be good. Mm -hmm. And how, well, then how do you duplicate that type of mindset then to others? Because there's so many people that don't think like you. <laughs> That's a hard question. Education, traveling, and get a passport. 
<laughs> but that's about it, though. Yo, Ian, thanks a lot, Thank man, you. for coming through. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank oh, you man. so much.